Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be discussing how tap water may be lowering your testosterone levels. In most houses in America, if you turn on the faucet or the tap and fill a glass of water, you're going to see something that appears to be a refreshing, clean glass of water. However, the truth of the matter is, only 1 in 10 people can even be sure that the water they're drinking from their tap is not only safe, but clean. So although the water that comes out of most taps in homes appears to be clear, clean, and safe, the fact of the matter is, improper sanitation, poor quality control, and poor hygiene can all lead to a water product that is highly contaminated and not what it appears to be. In fact, it's pretty well documented that most tap water, although maybe free of various viruses and pathogens, is also heavily contaminated with a wide variety of toxic substances. Everything from chemical runoff from industrial power plants and other industrial buildings, to herbicide and pesticide residue from industrial farmland, to having residues from various medications like antibiotics and birth controls. Not to mention that most of the water supply that runs through our taps also has added toxic substances like fluoride, chlorine, and even substances like atrazine. And of the many negative impacts that these various substances can have on our health, one of the most well-documented and well-observed is the endocrine-disrupting effects of the various substances that are found in our commercial water supply or in tap water. For example, if we take a look at this study here, it's been well-documented that farmers with the high fluoride exposure because they're using water contaminated with fluoride all the time and they're getting it on their skin, they're drinking it, and exposed to it all the time, have markedly lower levels of testosterone than farmers with a low exposure to fluoride. And the crazy part is, fluoride is not the only substance in tap water that has an anti-androgen or testosterone lowering effect. In addition to fluoride, one of the most commonly used herbicides and pesticides in the industrial farms is a substance known as atrazine. And atrazine is such a powerful androgen suppressing substance, meaning it's so potent at lowering the production of androgens like testosterone in the body, that it's been found in experiments to actually exert a complete chemical castration when exposed to various frogs and other animals. So meaning that chemically it is so powerful at lowering the production of androgens, it is as if the testicles of the animals exposed to atrazine have been completely removed. And not only are atrazine exposed males demasculinized or chemically castrated, but they were also completely feminized as adults. Additionally, the atrazine exposed males suffer from depressed testosterone levels, decreased breeding gland size, demasculinized and feminized larynx development, suppressed mating behavior, reduced spermatogenesis, and decreased fertility. And remember, atrazine is one of the most commonly used herbicides or pesticides in the world today. Over 80 million pounds of atrazine are sprayed on our food supply every year. So not only are people exposed to atrazine through the consumption of conventionally farmed foods, but atrazine or the pesticide runoff from these industrial farms into the water supply have been found to be present in our tap water and drinking water. So not only are we getting it through food, but it is also in our water. So if you're drinking tap water or bathing in it, you're also being exposed to atrazine, this incredibly androgenic suppressing chemical. So in only two ways so far, the exposure to fluoride and atrazine, tap water is incredibly suppressive to the production of androgens in the body, which is not just a problem for men. Remember, testosterone is an important sex steroid that is necessary for female fertility levels as well. Testosterone is an androgen hormone that increases the rate of metabolism, and when it's out of balance, even in the female body, to other hormones like estrogen and progesterone, then women can run into all sorts of metabolic issues as well. And if these two things weren't problematic enough, remember, tap water has also been found to be contaminated with things like birth control, which is one of the most estrogenic medications you could ever take. And estrogen can actually decrease testosterone in two major ways. First of all, Estrogen, when it increases in the body, will increase the production of the sex hormone binding globulin, which will bind to about 40% of the body's free testosterone. And in addition to that, estrogen can often stimulate the production of the aromatase enzyme, which aromatizes any of the free circulating testosterone in the body into more estrogen. Now these are only three documented ways in which tap water exposure or consumption may be decreasing your testosterone levels. However, there may be plenty of other estrogenic substances or chemicals in the commercial water supply 
in the tap water that may be further contributing to low testosterone levels. But in my opinion, these three ways in of themselves are enough to avoid the consumption of tap water. Unfortunately, even if you are hooked up to a city water supply, there are very simple ways to avoid the consumption of tap water and avoid the ingestion of these estrogenic substances that might be decreasing your testosterone levels. And two simple ways to do that is to get a charcoal and carbon filter for your shower and maybe even for your sink faucet and ideally do not drink from these things, just try to use them only for topical purposes like taking a shower or washing dishes or something along those lines. In regards to drinking water, I recommend getting charcoal filtered or carbon filtered or reverse osmosis water or even distilled water from your local grocer and just get refills and stick to drinking that or cooking with that only and not drinking even from the filtered tap water. And beyond that, if you have a history of drinking tap water or being regularly exposed to tap water and you suspect that you have low testosterone levels or you know and you're interested in bringing those testosterone levels back up into normal and healthy ranges, I'm going to highly recommend you watch this short video series which will give you every clinically proven, scientifically proven thing I've ever come across in terms of bringing testosterone levels back up into healthy ranges. So you'll get dietary, herbal, supplement, and lifestyle tips for optimizing testosterone levels. Otherwise, some simple things that you can start implementing now, first of all, considering that a lot of the testosterone lowering effects of tap water have to do with the fact that they dramatically increase estrogen and impair your body's natural production of testosterone, you're going to want to figure out ways to get that estrogen out of your body. So remember, estrogen has an affinity toward fat cells. So the more excess body fat you have in your body, the more likely you're going to be storing that estrogen. So taking a look at our healthy weight loss course and finding ways to slowly and healthfully lose weight is going to be very beneficial for lowering the production or accumulation of estrogen in the body and bringing back up testosterone. Now remember, you don't want to lose weight fast, especially if you have a lot of it, because as you burn up fat, you will be releasing free fatty acids and estrogens and other stored toxins, and this can have a very stressful influence or impact on the body. You want to ideally lose weight over a slower period of time, so that way it's less stressful on the body in both the process and in its effect. Other than that, Keep in mind that there are powerful herbs like nettle root, which have a very anti-estrogen effect in the body. Not only does it inhibit the aromatization of estrogen, so if you've been exposed to estrogen, it's going to inhibit estrogen's influence on converting your testosterone into estrogen, but nettle root also helps to lower the sex hormone binding globulin that estrogen increases that binds to your testosterone levels and impairs it from having an effect on your body. So that is one of the best herbs I think you could take for lowering estrogen and increasing testosterone levels naturally, and it corrects a lot of the negative effects that these substances in tap water can have on the body. However, that does bring this video to a close. I figured I'd share this information with all you guys because I know we have a large male following and a lot of you are interested in finding natural and simple ways to optimize your testosterone levels and lower the estrogen. Anyways, that's it for this video. So if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. If you're interested in referencing the studies I mentioned throughout this video, I'll be linking those along with links to the various recommended herbs, as well as links to the blog, online tonic herb shop, and online wellness academy, all in the description box below.